Nadia Malik was a beautiful and devoted mother, but at the age of just 22, in a series of tragedies, Nadia's family watched as everything they treasured, including Nadia herself, slipped through their fingers. Nadia's once promising story is now marred by a confusing web of secrets and lies, all of which convalesce to paint a complex and confusing tapestry of a controlling relationship turned deadly. Before we get into this week's tragic story, a word from our sponsors who enable this channel to keep going. I wanna tell you about a really cool product I found for my car. It's called Drift and they create air care products for both home and vehicle. Their car care products have these unique wood fresheners as well as metal and stone air fresheners. And for your home, they have candles, reeds, and sprays. Drift uses premium essential plus fragrant oil blends, which are free of harmful chemicals that traditional fragrance companies use. I use Drift in my car because life happens, but it doesn't have to stink. My two children are my world, but I also want to be able to drive a car without being embarrassed with my friends. So Drift helps make my car smell amazing while also being super low profile and environmentally friendly. So. All I have to do is use the magnet to install it and it's done in a second. Teak is my favorite smell so far, but the cool thing is that these car fresheners come as a subscription. First, you receive a starter kit with the clip and the scent. Then you can just get monthly refills and they recommend changing them every 30 days. You can change the frequency of your delivery, so if you want more or less, it's totally up to you. And you can cancel your subscription anytime. They have a special scent every single month, and I always look forward to what the newest one's going to be. Make sure to use our coupon code MERC for 55% off at Drift. That makes it less than $5 for your first month. Thank you so much to Drift for sponsoring this video. Nadia Malik grew up with her parents alongside her two brothers and a sister. Raised in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Nadia was described as an introverted and highly intelligent individual who preferred solitude. Growing up, she spent most of her time with their mother and was especially close to her sister. During her junior year at Marple Newton High School, she met the man who would eventually lead her life into disarray. This man was named Bupinder Singh, but went by the nickname Gagan. Once Nadia began dating Gagan, she started spending all of her time with him, barely spending any of her moments with her parents or siblings. Eventually, she stopped concentrating on her studies and her grades fell dramatically. Her family was against the relationship from the beginning and tried to dissuade her from continuing to date Gagan. However, Nadia claimed she was madly in love with Gagan and severed all ties with her family in order to live with him. Her family recalls that any friends Nadia had, she dropped after meeting her new boyfriend. Nadia's family found themselves in the grips of deep distress, particularly her parents, who were profoundly affected by Nadia's abrupt departure. Prior to dating Gagan, Nadia always said she wanted to do something in the medical field. Even though her studies were negatively affected by her boyfriend, she was able to enroll at University of the Sciences in Philadelphia. During her freshman year of college, however, she got pregnant, subsequently hiding her pregnancy from her family until after she gave birth to their son. Nadia and Gagan's relationship was tumultuous at its best and downright dangerous at its worst, marked by toxicity, threats, and emotional drain on Nadia. 
Despite never formalizing their union through marriage, over the course of their seven-year partnership, Nadia would go on to have three children with Gagan, each pregnancy shrouded in secrecy and isolation. On the 28th of February in 2012, Nadia found herself in a devastating situation involving her third-born child. Three months after the birth of their daughter, Alina, tragedy struck the family. On February 28th, 2012, police reports detail that Nadia had called and said that while she'd been inside her vehicle on the phone, she noticed that her baby had ceased breathing. Astonishingly, and much to the confusion of the panicked mother, Gagan, the father of the child, fled the scene, leading Nadia to grapple with the traumatic situation and responsibility of contacting the authorities on her own. The baby went on to pass away in the back seat of Nadia's car. Many wondered why, at this critical juncture, when the infant's life had hung in the balance, her father would up and leave, and an inquiry was initiated to look into the three-month-old's passing. The medical examiner concluded that the cause of death was attributed to a debilitating condition known as cachexia, a muscle disorder characterized by wasting sickness. The manner of the infant's death, an aspect which typically falls under categories such as natural causes or homicide, in this case was left as, quote, undetermined. No criminal charges were ever filed in connection to this tragic event. Some close to the family say that Gagan's running away and the lack of consequences he faced was a chilling hint of things to come. Following the death of her daughter, Nadia and Gagan would reportedly often fight. Nadia's siblings recall watching helplessly as the couple's relationship teetered on the edge of disaster, thereby causing Nadia much anxiety and stress. The young mother told her siblings, in not so many words, that she was being pushed to the brink by Gagan's erotic and aggressive tendencies. Nadia's brother described him as having, quote, no job and a, quote, Percocet problem. He remembers the strained relationship and familial isolation that it created, recalling, quote, I would barely speak to her. I told her to get out of this relationship four years ago. Lost and seemingly against the idea of turning to her family for help, Nadia found a lifeline. She began a close relationship with an army veteran and engineering student named Thomas Singh. He, along with Nadia's parents, were deeply concerned for her well-being and convinced her to distance herself from the destructive father of her children. However, escaping the clutches of Gagan was no easy task. Nadia was very thin and her stature much smaller than that of her live-in boyfriend. At 5 feet 5 inches and only 90 pounds, her brother said of the size difference between the two, quote, he is three times her weight. Gagan repeatedly placed Nadia and her family in situations where they feared for her life. At one point, the family found that Gagan had broken several of Nadia's ribs, a horrifying act of violence which went unreported and unpunished. Amidst this turmoil, Nadia confided in her family another painful secret about her private life. She had a chilling suspicion that the father of her children was slowly poisoning her to death. It was a shocking claim which left her parents in a state of uncertainty. They recall being unsure if Nadia's paranoia was a result of the physical abuse she endured or if there was actually some truth to her words. In January of 2012, Nadia was accepted into the pre-med program at Temple University. Soon, Gagan would go on to find about Thomas. Thomas recalls Gagan calling him and threatening, quote, if you don't leave her alone, you'll never hear from her again. Thomas recalls telling Nadia that Gagan's increasing rage was a result of her finally taking control of her life. When victims attempt to break free, it threatens the abuser's control, 
often triggering heightened violence within the relationship. Studies have shown that many domestic violence homicides occur during or after the critical leaving period. On the 6th of February, Nadia moved out of Gagan's home and into her parents' house after a fight with Gagan. However, two days later, Gagan picked her up from her parents' home, telling her that he only wanted to talk to her. On February 8th, Nadia called Thomas and told him that Gagan was not letting her leave. She told him that they had been driving around aimlessly and resting at different stops along the New Jersey Turnpike. She mentioned that Gagan had repeatedly assured her that he would eventually take her back to her parents' house or even to Thomas's apartment, but she also said that he never kept his word. Despite her predicament, Nadia did not want the police to be involved and therefore asked Thomas to contact her father and to inform him about the situation. However, Nadia's father did not know Thomas and presumed that the phone call was from Gagan. He refused to talk to him. Nadia then told Thomas to call one of her brothers, Fawad, who lived in Georgia, in order to get him to talk to Gagan. Thomas relayed the message to her brother. On February 9th, Nadia's brother Fawad called Gagan and tried to reason with him. While he was talking to him on the phone, he heard Nadia in the background yelling out, quote, he's not letting me go, he's not letting me go. The phone then cut out and the call was disconnected. Fawad kept trying to text his sister and call her, but only Gagan replied. At 8.51, Gagan told Nadia's brother that he was going to drop her off at their parents' house and that she'd be able to call him soon. Meanwhile, Thomas tried to contact Nadia as well. Gagan told him that they were going out to eat and that Nadia would be returning home by 11 a.m. However, when 11 o'clock passed and Nadia was nowhere to be seen, Thomas grew even more worried. At 11.37, Gagan told Fawad that Nadia had dropped him off at his apartment and that he handed over the car to her, adding that she would be arriving at her parents' home shortly. However, Nadia never arrived. After her brother called Gagan again, he told him that Nadia was not with him anymore and that he had no idea where she was. Fawad then contacted the police and filed a missing persons report. The police went to their apartment, but found nobody there. Gagan and Nadia had been driving and living in their Nissan Altima for the past few days, and because of that, police were finding it difficult to track them down. Detectives urgently requested to track Nadia's cell phone, as it appeared to be the sole phone in possession of Gagan at the time. Using that phone, Gagan later sent an ominous series of text messages which read, in part, quote, You lose. I win. She's never going home. You're never going to see her face again. Another text stated, quote, Look for us in the entire United States. You won't find us. In yet another exchange, Gagan, increasingly unpredictable and angry, texted the family, quote, You will never find me in the U.S. again. On Tuesday, February 11th, Gagan refused to let either Thomas or Nadia's family speak to her unless they sent him cash via money pack. Her brother remembers requesting to speak with his sister, but Gagan simply replied with the threat, quote, send me the money or you'll never hear from her again. Thomas recalls receiving texts that were purportedly from Nadia herself one of which begged Thomas to provide the money order number to Gagan. However, Thomas was suspicious of the text and refused to send any money until he was able to hear Nadia's voice. Gagan then sent a text stating, quote, Okay, think whatever, bye. I promise you this now, you won't hear her. I'll make sure, bye, you lost the chance. The investigation, meanwhile, turned up surveillance footage of Nadia from the morning of February 9th. She was seen at a restaurant with a man, most likely Gagan. Additionally, a traffic light camera captured her driving the Nissan Ultima in Upper Darby, approximately 25 miles away from her parents' residence, after their meal, around 12 p.m. 
On Wednesday, February 12th, law enforcement intensified their efforts to locate Nadia. Detectives finally got a break. Nadia's phone pinged three times in Salone, Ohio. This was the very same town where Gagan's parents lived. At around 9.30 a.m., police went to Gagan's parents' house and knocked on the front door. Another police officer went around to the back of the house just in case Gagan tried to run. Sure enough, when they knocked on the front door, Gagan attempted to flee through the rear exit of the house. He was immediately caught and taken to the police station for questioning. Police, however, were unable to find Nadia, nor did they locate her car. Police found Nadia's phone in Gagan's possession, as well as her driver's license and the vehicle's keys. Detectives noted that Gagan had visible scratches on his body alongside a black eye. Gagan was questioned about the whereabouts of Nadia, and he told police that he had had a fight with her, and that's why he had scratches on his face. He said that he left Nadia with the car back in Philadelphia. This detail caused police to question his story even more, as the car only had one set of keys, and those keys were found in Gagan's possession. So police wondered how could Nadia have driven off with the car. He told police that after dropping her off, he boarded a bus to New York City and then another bus to Ohio. To prove it, he gave them the bus ticket stubs. Upon being questioned as to why he still had Nadia's license, he claims he simply happened to be holding on to it for her. He also explains that he wasn't attempting to flee the home when police arrived. He said he just wanted to see who was knocking at the front door by going through the back. Despite his act of innocence, police were highly suspicious of his statements. However, they did not have any concrete evidence with which to charge him for Nadia's disappearance. While they were not able to arrest him for Nadia's disappearance, Gagan was on probation in Pennsylvania for two DUIs and for assaulting an employee at a 7-Eleven. For breaking his rules of probation, he was extradited to Delaware County to face charges. A large-scale search for both Nadia and her missing vehicle was initiated. Police released a photo of the car, asking the general public for help. However, several days went by without any success. Then, on the morning of February 20th, police received a call from a man claiming to have found the car. He told police that while reading the newspaper, he stumbled upon the car's picture and was surprised to find it parked near the bar that he was at. The police immediately went to that location and found the car parked in the heart of Philadelphia. The car had seven or eight parking tickets on the windshield, meaning it had been there for a while. To the horror of the investigators, when they opened the car door, they found Nadia's body in the front seat, underneath a duffel bag and several clothes. She was found slumped forward in the front seat, which had been fully reclined. Nadia's knees were on the floor, and her upper body had turned to its side, laying on the passenger seat. While she displayed bruises on her back, there were no indications of a physical altercation or significant injuries to her body. The car contained a pile of clothing, alongside loose change, receipts for food and gas, and a marriage license application signed by Gagan. Police also found six prescription pill bottles, all of which were issued to Gagan, of which three were empty. The first parking ticket on the car dated from February 10th, but oddly enough, the ticket was issued on a different street than where the car was eventually found. It turned out that Philadelphia had experienced a terrible blizzard on Valentine's Day, and it was discovered that the car had been towed to a separate location. Even though the car was towed and remained parked in that location for 11 days, nobody noticed Nadia's body inside. Police say the body went unseen by those passing by because the car was buried in snow and the windows were tinted. Surprisingly, despite the numerous parking tickets, the car's license plate number had not been run through the system. One woman even complained to authorities about the abandoned car several times, but nothing was done. An autopsy revealed that Nadia's body showed no signs of any struggle. She did not have wounds that suggested suffocation nor sexual assault. The medical examiner noted that she did have bruises and abrasions on her body, but nothing that would majorly reveal cause of death. 
Strangely enough, the medical examiner noticed that there was a small pink pinprick mark on the back of Nadia's right hand, which suggested a needle puncture. The family believes that Nadia was poisoned, as Nadia's body had been preserved due to the cold temperatures of the car. The medical examiner was unable to determine the time or even day of her death. A number of extensive toxicology tests were conducted on Nadia's body, but nothing of interest would be found. Her cause and manner of death was eventually ruled undetermined. Meanwhile, Gagan was extradited to Delaware County and was sentenced to 3 to 24 months in prison for his probation violation. When police informed Gagan about Nadia's ultimate, untimely fate, they recall there was no reaction from him and said that he did not express remorse nor regret. He simply asked for his lawyer and refused to talk to investigators. The family hired a forensic expert who said that Nadia's death was, quote, extremely suspicious. The expert said that the death was possibly a homicide, but that the cause and manner remained undetermined. As a result, detectives could not charge Gagan for Nadia's death. During the initial stages of the investigation, the couple's three-year-old son was living with Nadia's family in Brumall, but Nadia's infant daughter had been kept in Ohio with Gagan's family despite Nadia's parents' wishes. Ultimately, after a lengthy custody battle with Gagan, a Delaware County judge ruled that the children would be better off with their maternal grandparents. Nadia's family remain resolute in their quest for answers, driven by a desire for closure and justice. The lack of definitive information weighs heavily on their hearts, and such helplessness prompted them to initiate a social media campaign titled Justice for Nadia. In 2016, Nadia's family sued Gagan, contending that he had, quote, intentionally harmed Malik and left her dead or near dead in the car. The suit cites that he abandoned her without her identification, her cell phone, or even the keys to the vehicle. The lawsuit also blamed Gagan for the sudden and mysterious death of the couple's daughter in 2012. In the absence of any response to the allegations contained in the lawsuit, a Philadelphia common pleas court judge issued a default judgment and ordered Gagan to pay the Malik family $10 million to compensate for their loss. However, those close to the family say that it is unlikely that they will ever receive that amount from Gagan. Nadia's family became aware that a man matching Gagan's description was a frequent user of Paul Talk, a video chat program. They found out that this user sometimes discussed Nadia's death with other users back in 2015 and in 2016. One woman gave Nadia's family screenshots of a conversation that she had had with the man she believed to be Gagan. In the exchange, he asked her if she was talking to him in order to collect the $100,000 reward. No new information was gleaned from this interaction, however. Nadia's family has offered a $50,000 reward for information leading to the arrest and conviction of the person responsible for Nadia's death. Nadia's family laments that ultimately, with no official cause of death, Gagan remains a free man and Nadia's death remains shrouded in mystery. Thank you so much to Drift for sponsoring us, and guys, don't forget to check out the link in the video below to make your car smell as good as mine.